thank you for the time you gave us. It's a little weird. Uh, this, until yesterday we played on court and now you, me asking you questions. So the first one is going to be actually the one that I prepared really carefully. Okay. So how was it to play me? Oh, I was. Uh, we had a few tough ones in the beginning. And no, but technically. Technically. technically oh, really, you mean like what was a, your t tactic when you had to play me? You. So what was the idea? Now you can tell me. And now I can tell you. What was it? I mean, I guess because you were one of the bigger guys on tour with a big serve and movement and clearly is an issue, you try to make the big guy move. You know, that's okay. what you try to do. You try to get the returns back into play. But at the end of the day, you focus on your own serve first because you don't want to make a mistake there because that could cost you the match. Uh, maybe go through the forehand a little bit more because you were maybe more susceptible on the forehand side, I thought, because you were actually good with the point from the backhand corner. You had a good backhand clearly, you know, with variation with your slice. And uh, I thought you always played very clever. You played the moments well, you know, so when yeah. it was a break point or beginning of the games or um, in the right moments you played the right way. Uh, you knew when to play aggressive and when to keep the ball in play and that but was when, when you were difficult. slicing and keeping the ball low, like especially on the turns, that was on purpose or you, you had to chip? I almost had to chip to be quite okay. honest. I mean I, I can of course come over it but I felt like if I come over too much I might give you too many aces so I prefer okay. to just get the ball back and then try with my defense and okay. work my way into the points. Okay, nice. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know, yeah. <laughs> Generally, when you when you prepare matches, I mean, how much percentage-wise is your game? So let's say. Uh, or how much do you adapt actually to the opponents? Well, that's the thing, uh, you constantly fight. Um, I think it's most important, in particular my situation, to focus the most on myself. To have a clear game plan, what am I gonna try to do? If then things don't go well, you have to have a plan B or C of what else you could be trying. And I think it's very important to be aware of the opponent's strengths and weaknesses, like I told you with you, for instance. Yeah. But I do believe the first stop, you have to know exactly what you want to do. And sometimes you get caught up in too much tactics, too much yeah. philosophical talk before the match that you actually forget how to play yourself. So you have like a base, let's say 70%, right. whatever, and then you... I would think so. I, I, I would think it's, it should be at least 70% focus on your own game, yes. Okay. anything particular that in this moment you're working on or it's basically just getting back in shape and trying to well I mean first it was important to get back in shape you know after the back problems I've had in Indian Wells um, then you know adapting to to clay courts that's now my biggest switch so now I think I'm facing a situation where I don't want to play too much like a clay quarter. My best game is aggressive with some variation, and that's what I'm working on, making sure I get good rhythm. I struggle in so Madrid. So nothing new, I mean, it's just... Nothing new, but okay. uh, I, I'd like to play aggressive, you know, after all, not just wait for the opponents instead. Okay. prepare the match how much time before the match you start your routine like how much time you're taking to start thinking about the match that you're gonna play on right. let's say you play at two o'clock mm -hmm. so do you start thinking about it like half hour or one hour three hours five hours maybe even day before yeah maybe the day before or the moment you know which opponent you're gonna play against you know uh, that helps then you already start thinking a little bit you know yourself but it's really the day of the match that usually I engage my mind into it and I, and I speak to my coaches then usually probably an hour before the match and we okay. talk about tactics, we talk about how we want to do it. I usually arrive three hours before at the courts, then warm up, take a shower, eat, talk about the match, tape up my ankles, you know, stretch, yeah. warm up, get ready and then play the match. Place, let's say that you 
like my, you know, you say maybe Santa Claus, Wimbledon, right. like the place where you say that here I feel the best. Of, of all courts or places, yeah. maybe it's not you know match court, maybe it's a practice court. Yeah. No, no, it, it's got to be a match court. A yeah. practice court, you never feel comfortable because yeah. it's uh, small. It, it's, <laughs> it's 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 strange, you know. And practice courts uh, change the whole time. But for me, probably Wimbledon Centre Court has a special meaning uh, because of obvious reasons. But as well, it creates a lot of pressure, so you're never quite relaxed, maybe on that centre mm. court, unless you are winning two sets Either. for love and a break, right? <laughs> You never retired during the match. Right. So this is one of the incredible records that I think. Which match was the one closest for you to say, okay, I, I have to give up? I mean, you played many injured. I mean, we know that. Right. But the one that you, you said I barely, you know, finished it. I don't know if the, I've actually had a match where I was really, really considering to retire, to be okay. honest, because I feel like when I've never injured myself usually during a match, very often I've gotten <coughs> I went into a match not feeling great, yes. either uh, sick or um, um, you know carrying an injury, maybe the ankle or um, you know the, the knee and so forth. It's like the 2005 um, uh, World Tour Finals finals against Now Bandit. Yeah. I had twisted my ankle two three weeks before and. I knew I was limited with it, but I led two sets to love, and then Nal Bandon came back, and at the end he was up 4-1 in, in the fifth, double break point. Oh, really? No, he was up at the end in the fifth. Oh, okay. And then I came back, and, six, six, but there five, I was like, seven, I mean, four, why am I still playing? My ankle's not good, but what happened, all of a sudden I served for the match at 6-5, 30 love. I still ended up losing the match, but it might go through your mind, but at the end of the day, I never gave up. dodgy for me you know I had a sunstroke one time against Davidenko in Miami after winning Indian Wells and that one really took a lot of out of me but again I came through the match all of a sudden the next day I felt a little bit better and you know you, you can play better too okay. so it, it depends on the situation but I never really said thinking to myself okay, maybe that I should, I should. I remember the juniors one time I gave up and I was crying and asking my coach I can't play anymore I have so much pain in my back I have to stop I think it's like Stop, it's okay, yeah, you know. So it's fine. And that was the one time I gave up, I remember, sure, yeah. yeah. All the records that you have, is there the one particular that you are trying to improve? Or it's just um, the whole package? I think it's, uh, or, I, mean, I think it's the global uh, idea of uh, wanting to achieve more. Everything I have achieved already, nobody can take away. So I want to add to that. And I think, you know, having broken or equaled so many great records that I still have the opportunity to do more is really, really exciting, I have to say. It keeps me really motivated mm. on top of playing against this new generation of players coming up, the generation that's at the top at the moment, that I can still hang with them and, you know, slow them down, and slow them down <laughs> or uh, have joy playing their playing styles and seeing how the game has evolved as, uh, as well in the last 10, 15 years. It's a big challenge, you know, adjusting my game to that as well. But do you have a feeling like, let's say, Rafa or Novak, who is bigger threat to some of your records, maybe slams or, or, well, I mean, I would, or... Naturally, I think it's Rafa because he's closer to everything and yeah. he's, uh, as long as he's going to keep on playing, I always see him winning a lot of matches, winning a lot of titles because he's that good. Novak obviously clearly puts himself in a position now where he can create, you know, great and many, many things. It depends clearly the next five years how many younger guys are going to come through and push people out of the game as well. Talk a little bit about Wimbledon. Sure. Uh, personally, for you, played 1999 was the first one. Yes. You played. So let's say last 13 years you played. How how has it changed? Your well, it's changed a lot it in my fast. mind. I used it was to fast back then. <laughs> I used to be fast back then. Um, I used to watch uh, aggressive serve and volley tennis on TV. Becker, Sampras, you know, Edberg. For me, those those that that was grass court tennis. tour 
that's the kind of guys I used to play still uh, in 99 and 2000 and then I realized how the game slowed down there was more bass signs in the game I think in 2000 I played against Kefelnikov but he was still serving bowling on the first serve you know yeah. where today probably he wouldn't serve volley anymore I've just seen improvements in racket technology, strings, balls, and then also I think the surface at Wimbledon, and all the, that created a new generation of players that said, I'd rather hit a passing shot than a volley. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think yeah. that's changed the game. I think the grass is too perfect today. Mm -hmm. Before, the grass was so wobbly uh, that uh, the balls good. would bounce the wrong way, so it was really hard to hit the good passing shot. Mm -hmm. And I think through these changes, we've seen, we've seen a, you know, a different playing style today on the grass. Consider changing the racket? Yes, absolutely. I've been in close contact always with Wilson and uh, to make trying to actually it's that racket a little different. Maybe it's that or totally changing totally and change. just listening to the new technology they have because I feel it's a wrong philosophy just to say this my thing's it. the best, yes. there's nothing better, and that's the only thing that can work. And I've actually was really close playing with uh, a different racket, just one tournament to see. At the end of the year, um, in the exhibitions in South America, I played. I played with a different string just to see how that was going to react. So I'm constantly testing and trying testing out. And trying. Yeah. Important. The serve. It's more important on return. Well, I think it's got, still got to be the serve because yeah. that's what you control. The return you don't control that much. But you tend to see like the big serves actually struggling because if you, I, I always felt like on the grass I struggled personally because my returns were not good enough for grass. Right. You know. I, I, I felt like if you if you go with a serve, you you can you still can't make more points on grass than other surfaces with a with a with a serve. But mm. in the other hand, for me, it was more difficult to return. Yeah. So how 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 does it actually return game feel for you on grass? You know, in comparison yeah. to the other surfaces. It's it's different. You know, clearly you have a little bit less say, yeah. and it's more complicated, and in the process more frustrating. Like you say, yeah. especially then for a guy who doesn't return that well. But for some reason. I feel like I return as good on the grass than I return on clay. I don't know if the surface helps my returning mm. style on the grass. So for me, actually, the serve is very important. Is know that I know I can hold my service games easier. I, I put less pressure on my service games, and then in, on the return game, I'm happy to take chances, take it early, chip and charge, you know, and go after it. For me, it's pretty simple on grass, and so it's been very natural. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Now I, with, I'd the still roof go with the roof on, with the roof on, do you feel the difference, like? How, how different is actually when the roof is closed and when it's open? It's clearly different. It's something... Big change. It's a big change in a way that we have not seen Wimbledon that way. And that makes it unique in many ways that everybody now who plays under the roof feels they're part of something special. Mm. Because it didn't happen before and you do have to be lucky to play on Santa Court at Wimbledon and you have to be lucky that it rains and they shut the roof and they're not going to wait and then put you back on when the when it's nice again. So it feels like it's something unique to be part okay. of an indoor match at Wimbledon, number one. Then the playing style, it feels very similar to when it's outdoors, but clearly you have no more wind. There is a bit of an echo when you hit the yes. ball and the atmosphere changes just slightly. Okay. But uh, overall, I, I feel like you can play the same way. saying for forever now that you're going to be playing for two or three more years there is this change that there is going to be an extra week between Paris and yeah. Wimbledon uh, is do you think that's going to change your preparation for for Wimbledon I think because so. now in the past yeah. you played Halle mm -hmm. 
more times yes than no. Yes. I mean, I think this maybe will give you more, I mean, to be more consistent on playing that that uh, that week, or yeah. have you ever thought about it? Well, I think that all the players are going to be better prepared. So I think it's better for the game. I know um, they're going to lose a week later on on the hard court season, but honestly, let's be realistic and open. I think it's a good change, mm. you know. Um, it's good for the people who want to recover after a long clay court season because many take the opportunity to play a lot on clay as well. So maybe they want to take a week off. For those who think grass is my service, I want to play as much as I can, they get an extra week. And for those who do a bit of both, they can prepare better um, for Wimbledon and maybe improve in general throughout their career more on grass because one week more on grass is going to make you a better player as well. Yes. So I think it's a good change and who knows, maybe in the future I'll play two tournaments leading into Wimbledon, which could be something to consider as well for me. Okay. That's it. Do you have any questions for me? For you, how is it now on the other side? On the other side, you still you always be a tennis yes, player. But yes. how, is, how does it feel it's in the it's, it's body in wise? The body wise is different. Body okay. wise, I am, I'm having difficulties to push myself to to the gym. To the gym. Yeah, to, to, I don't blame to, you. To do it physically. <laughs> what do you think after you? How are you gonna? Uh, I think you need. I, I think you probably need a challenge. It's like okay, I'm gonna m run a marathon in six months, and then you build up for something okay. like that, or. I'm going to play a seniors tournament, let me get somewhat ready for it. That's how probably you need a challenge or you have a weekly routine, say every Monday I'm playing soccer with my friends, you know, or no. for me to go just to the gym, just to work out. It's going to be rough. It's going to be rough, like for you, yes. I know. Okay. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Good luck. I enjoyed it. Here and in the future and we... In, in, in Sky Italy, there is a lot of people actually, huge fan of yours. We still want to see you winning big ones, so good luck and thanks for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys.